There's times where I'll accidentally get glutened, and there's times where I'm just, I'm in a mood, and I'm just going to have the gluten. <laughs> and, you know, for the next three days, my husband's like, I told you not to have that gluten. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's a choice that I, I get to make. really help it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's a choice I get to make, and I understand now what it does to me. Whereas I, I didn't understand any of that before. I didn't realize food was the root of my health problems.
Okay. Do you, do you get to reuse the oil, or is it the one? I have never reused the oil. I, I don't okay. think you were going to do that. I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's flavored with mm -hmm. rosemary and garlic afterwards, but I just, I I don't. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, so I don't okay. want to say. <laughs> Just in case. I'm, I'm sure somebody knows. But, but Costco yeah. has two giant jugs for okay. like fifteen dollars. <laughs> mm. Use avocado oil or, or olive, olive oil. oil. Right. Oh, yeah. okay. There you go. Yeah. In the summertime, we enjoy fruit, so I haven't cut that out totally. I don't do it like I used to. You know, a whole <laughs> watermelon in one day, but everything is in moderation now, and I'm able to do that. Whereas before, I didn't have that relationship with food either. Oh well. Yeah, talk more about the relationship. When I was sad, when I was happy, when I was mad. Mm. My whole day revolved around, I'd wake up, what am I going to eat? And but while I'm eating that, what am I going to have for lunch? Like, everything I did revolved around food. And now, I don't hardly think about it. It's like, oh, I'm hungry, maybe I should eat something. Yeah. Or, um, it's it's like a, it's kind of, like they say, it's more for fuel now okay. versus, you know, feelings yeah. and and i get that now i see that i don't crave food when i have bad days yeah um it's it's a completely different relationship and that didn't happen overnight i think that that is something that has taken the full journey yeah. to realize that i had a i had an eating disorder if you think about it yeah, yeah. i had a very bad you know i love to binge eat i used to i used to eat until i felt sick that's what I thought people needed to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't even do that anymore. Half the time, I don't finish my food. Oh, wow. Yeah. So did you, like, make a conscious switch to, like, okay, I'm feeling sad or whatever. I need to go swimming. Or I need to go do these other things. Or did you just, it was just so gradual? It's just been gradual. It's been very gradual. Because over the last five years, I've had a lot of things happen. Like, I did break a leg. And, you know, that's something where... Sorry, when they say that, when you're acting, they don't mean yeah. that literally, okay? <laughs> no, I literally just stood up and my leg broke. Oh, man. Um, you serious? Yeah. It oh, was wow. asleep and I didn't know it. So my ankle rolled and snapped. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, that can happen. So wow. when, when your leg is asleep, be very careful when you stand okay. up. Yeah. Um, so I was in a scooter and I couldn't walk. I love walking. I love hiking. I've had five surgeries. Those, you know, those are all things I think you would feel like, I can't diet right now. These are very life-altering situations, mm -hmm. and dieting is not at the top of my list. All of my doctors with each surgery and my leg were impressed with how quickly I healed, oh. how quickly I bounced back. Mm -hmm. I can't take a lot of medications because of my kidneys. Yeah. And um, I wasn't feeling... I wasn't feeling like I missed out. Yeah, I wasn't moving, but it didn't help my weight. Like, I think when my leg broke, I gained like 15 pounds, but I couldn't do anything. Yeah. I had a little scooter to ride around on, and that even hurt, oh, wow. you know, getting around on it. Um, each surgery I had, I had to wait at least 12 weeks before they even wanted me walking long distances besides just around my house. Yeah. And it was very... Um, it, it set me back. It set me back mentally and physically, but I noticed if I stayed eating well, mm. I felt better mentally and I was able to heal quicker and get through it quicker. And I didn't spiral, whereas before I think I would have spiraled yeah. into a really bad depression with each one of those surgeries that and I was told not to do anything. Yeah. Well, and then it's more than 15 pounds. And then oh, you just yeah. beat yourself up the whole time, yes. too. Yeah. When, I mean, anytime you have a trial like that, mm -hmm. it's going to be difficult no matter what. I would so say you... with my 160-pound loss during the last five and a half years, there's been three instances I can think of where I went up about 20 to 22 pounds. Mm -hmm. But I was able to just go right back, right back to the basics, yeah. back to the keto chow, back to what I'm doing. And it came right back off. Yeah. So I never like when I'm telling people I've lost 150 pounds, but there was this one time that, you know, I get, you know, I don't include <laughs> yeah. that because I'm, I'm back on track. There's no point in dwelling on, right. you know, things that happen. But Just, I think it is really good to hear. Yeah. Because I, I feel like, especially on our journey, like Chris and I have both gained weight and we've been keto and we've not stopped doing mm -hmm. keto the whole time. Um, but it gives me hope that we can we can get there again. You yeah. know, like there are different circumstances in everyone's lives and there are different hard times yep. that come and go and we can just keep, keep carrying on. Right. Mm -hmm. And get through. And there, there were times where I'm just like, 
you know, and it wasn't that I was eating off track. Right. It was how much I was eating mm-hmm. and yeah. no like movement whatsoever. Yeah. And, you know, just really being stuck in the house. And once I started to feel better, I'm like, I know what to do. I, I know how to do all this. I'm just going to do it again. Yeah. And I get every time I feel like I need a reset, I go back immediately two shakes a day. And now I'll do a carnivore meal. Yeah. Mm. And that, that brings me back a lot quicker. But as before, yeah. you know, it was like pr- portioned out, you right. know, a little veggie, little. Oh, okay. But I, I do well without vegetables. I don't cut them out completely. Yeah. But I do okay without them. They're for entertainment purposes. Right. Right. <laughs> They're for color on the plate. Right. <laughs> it does make it look pretty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I was wondering too, in those times, do you feel like it was like a lot of emotional stress that could be adding to that? Of course. Because I, I feel like if we're stressed out or don't get sleep, like any mm-hmm. of those factors also play a huge role. And so even if you're eating perfectly, if you're stressed out, yeah. then it doesn't matter if you have a, an illness or an injury. Mm-hmm. Like, that's debilitating during yep. that time, too. So, yeah. How we feel, I think, plays a very big role in it and our weight and our health. And Because I know when I'm feeling down, I also don't feel good. Yeah. And mm-hmm. those all just go hand in hand. So what have you found that you do that's not necessarily eating that helps you, like, get out of those mental slumps or anything like that swimming swimming and walks yeah okay just being outside i call it hiking and i tell everyone i love to hike i I think an avid hiker would laugh at me (laughs) it's not flat okay when i'm hiking it's just not flat (laughs) i'm walking through the hills but um stuff like that getting out in nature Mm -hmm. um i used to think that that was you know people just said that to say that but it, it does help it helps a lot are you doing laps in the pool or just yeah okay and when I travel, it's more snorkeling and free diving. But okay, swimming is my biggest, my biggest stress reliever. Nice. Yeah, I love to swim. Now people may know you because um, you're a bit famous on your your Facebook group, the uh, the Keto Village. Can you talk about why you created that group? Kind of what it's for, what you use it for. When I when I started keto. And I had found the keto chow and I was doing really well. Immediately, like the first three months, I think I lost 40 pounds. It was ridiculous. It was just like, wow, I didn't have any help. I didn't have any groups. I didn't have any support. I had my husband and I was like, I'm gonna make a group. I'm gonna tell everybody what I'm doing and I'm gonna do it for free. Because the people that I would find wanted to charge me an arm and a leg, plus Kaiser charged me a lot of money to start me out. And I'm like, no, this. I'm just going to do this in my spare time. And that's that's how that grew. Yeah. I just wanted a place that everybody could go and we could all help each other. And there was no f- hidden fees. Yeah. And I have a lot of uh, downtime. I do a lot of work from home. And I know losing weight um, has a lot of psychological stuff behind it. Yeah. So I leave my messages open for everybody. Mm. Um, people message me 24-7 and i'm just i'm there for anybody i'm there for everyone you can you can post in the group or you can message me privately and we all help each other yeah that's so awesome yeah we've always loved that about you knowing what you've been through what advice would you give to someone who's like starting keto uh be patient be gentle with yourself Mm -hmm. just because you eat something that you weren't supposed to eat doesn't mean you failed right you just pick up and you do better next time you haven't failed. Um, support is number one. Find somebody you can talk to. Mm-hmm. I get probably 20 messages a day of people sending me pictures of uh, menus at restaurants, right? ingredients on the back of something, and asking if it's something that I would eat. <laughs> I know you've helped a lot of people with macros, too. Oh, yes. Past. I love studying macros for people. It gets really complicated. People get frustrated with it. So I have no problem setting those. Just nice to know. Like, okay, just somebody tell me what to do and I'll do it for a while. Yes, that's that. I get a lot of that. Just tell me how to do it. (laughs) I can't make menu plans for people because I feel like we all have different needs. Mm -hmm. And different likes. And different likes. So I do not make menu plans. I will tell you what I ate. I will post a picture of every single thing I eat all day long. I do a post every day. What are we eating today? Yep. So people can just look like, 
oh, I could have that or, mm -hmm. oh, that's what they're having. There's like a purpose behind that post. It's so that other people can get an idea of like what's okay to have and what's probably not a good ideal to have. But, you know, in the end, you're your own person and you have to do what works for you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the biggest takeaway for anyone starting. It is your body. It is your journey. And you have to do what's right for you. Mm -hmm. I'll guide you, but you don't. You don't have to listen to me 100%. Right. I mean, that's so important to yeah. be individualized and just realize, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it takes people longer than other people. Don't compare yourself oh, to someone else. That's number one. Because <laughs> you're worth working for. Mm -hmm. And if it's slower, it doesn't matter. A lot of my stuff was inflammation. That's why I lost so quickly. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that what I was eating was causing so many health issues. And the moment I cut it out, my body was like, Look at us. We can be a body now. Yeah. <laughs> we can function properly. Yeah. And the pain was less. Oh, so much less. I don't even know how often it is that I even take a Tylenol anymore. Mm. You know, I, I, I have to be hurt or something. Yeah. <laughs> or have a cold. That would that would be about it. I don't take any. I was on 22 medications back then. Oh, my And gosh. then we got it down to 17. Now I'm on two. And they're just, yeah. One's for heartburn. I can't kick heartburn. I don't know why. Oh, I just... Mm -hmm. I've tried everything, even carnivore. I just, I get acid reflux. That actually makes me think of something um, today. Mm -hmm. Like today, um, somebody was asking on Reddit and they were saying that they were having digestive issues and a little bit of diarrhea. And I said, hey, <laughs> guess what? Um, so one of our friends, Christy Davis, noticed that adding beef gelatin mm -hmm. to keto chow can help with that. Now, it obviously doesn't help with your acid reflux. It doesn't help with my acid. I don't have acid reflux every single day. Yeah. But if I stop my protonics, comes right back. Mm -hmm. And then I have it all the time. Okay. But can you tell us a little bit about, because that, the beef gelatin thing is really interesting. And mm -hmm. I still haven't, I have no clue why it works. Well, yeah, why do you think it works? Or how it works. Yeah. I have found a but, couple articles on it. Okay. It has to do with dairy and breaking down the enzymes in dairy that people have problems with. Okay. It makes it easier to digest. I don't know if it binds to it. I don't know what it does. That was everybody coming to me with keto chow. It upsets mm -hmm. my digestive tract. Okay. And I was like Googling, Googling, and I came across this beef gelatin can aid in the dig digestion of dairy. And I'm like... Mm. Wait, that actually might make the shake thicker a little yeah. bit too because butter thins it. Yeah. And I like a fuller, I like feeling fuller from the shakes. And gelatin changed everything. Yeah. The texture's perfect. I'm full forever when I do it. Uh, I can turn it to pudding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah. can make gummies. I can make licorice. I can make, <laughs> you know, but yeah, it totally, I would say 80% of people that switched to it had relief. So how do you do that though? Because there are a lot of people you say, just put gelatin in there and they're like, oh. they're like but how well i like <laughs> butter for my fat source so i start with hot water okay um i add a teaspoon not the scoop that comes with the gelatin a <laughs> teaspoon mm -hmm. i add that to the water and the butter and i i emulsify those together emulsify okay. so and they're going then, in, a, in a blender in the blender okay and then i add the keto chow and I don't okay. let it go for too long because then it gets too many air bubbles and then it doesn't fit in my cup when I go to pour it. Yeah. But um, And then I stick them in the fridge. I make three to six at a time every time. Um, I've learned that with the same flavor, I can fill a pitcher in the fridge nice. and just pour from that. So that's really nice to do. Nice. Sometimes it's like a little top off before bed, you know, just like a <laughs> little keto chow before bed nice. <laughs> if I'm feeling snacky. So you don't no. bloom it. You just I don't. No, I don't it. bloom it. It's fine. Yeah. That's what I've done too. I haven't. Yeah. Blimmed it, but I, I'm sure some people would like to do that. I heard it gets a little chunky if you're just using the shaker. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, you would have to yeah. bloom it. Yeah, blooming and then would melt help. it, mm -hmm. and then you could use the shaker. Yeah. But. I think my water's warm enough that it keeps the butter and the the gelatin. It they they melt perfectly fine. I think, yeah. you know, and it turns this really cool like milky yellow color. Mm -hmm. And once it looks like that, I add the keto chow. Okay. And then just pour them off into my cups. <laughs> nice. The other cool, cool thing about collagen is your gut bacteria loves it mm -hmm. more than fiber. Yeah. Even so. I think that's another reason I don't have issues not eating. I eat a lot of gelatin. I mean, I put it in, in yeah. if I make soup, if I make roast, if I put it in everything. Yeah. So Christy, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience? Keep it simple. Be kind to yourself. Be patient. Do not compare yourself to others. And your journey is your own. 
Okay. Don't let someone get you down if they're like, you should not eat that. <laughs> you know, don't let that get to you because it. That's not keto. It, that's not keto. Yeah. yeah. Don't keto police people. <laughs> Please. <laughs> that's what I would like to say. Don't keto police people. Okay. Well, very good. Well, thanks everybody for joining us and we'll catch you next time. If you have any questions or suggestions for topics that we might cover in the future, let us know. If you have any questions for Christy, she might even pop in and answer them in the comments. Yeah, so, yeah. But thanks for joining us, and you have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Like and subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs>